Thank you for tuning in, and welcome back to the Sandwich of Coherency. So, let's just go ahead and jump right into this. Today, I want to get into the fact that um, Chuck Schumer on Martin Luther King Day was um, speaking at a black church on behalf of black people. Oh boy, he's coming to save you. Coming to save you. Like he's some fucking democratic savior or some shit. I'm sorry, is, is, isn't this the same exact guy that, uh, has been agreeing with Biden? You know, he's pushing his voting rights at. There's this new voting rights bill they want, they gotta get through because we gotta federalize the elections for black people. Cause, Schumer agrees with Biden and Kamala and Elizabeth Warren and many others in their quest to get people to believe that um, black people are stupid. I mean, white supremacists believe that black people are not intelligent and they can never get ahead without the help of white people. Chuck Schumer and Democrats believe that Black people are not intelligent, and they can't get a hit without the help of white people. I'm not seeing any difference between the two. And, and I think it's interesting, because, you know, you, you can watch Chuck Schumer, Warren, and all these people, when they talk to black people, they, they never say the bullshit that they've been saying on television the whole time. You know, it's always... They're not, they're not being allowed to vote. They're passing, trying to pass laws that will deny you the vote. You're not, you know, you know, black people don't know how, they don't have IDs and da da da. How come you never go in front of them and say that dumb shit? How come you never stand up in the church and say something like, see, I know that, you know, um, because of your skin color, uh, you don't have identification. And you can't figure out the process to vote. How come they only say that shit behind the cameras? How come they never? I mean, it was always behind the camera, but in front of the camera. But how come you never, ever catch them going before the very people they're talking about and saying that shit? How come they never say, stand up in front of the people they're talking about, making these long-winded speeches, and just say straight up, hey, look, we're trying to pass this thing because we don't think that you know how to get an identification. We don't believe that you can figure it out. Because essentially, let's break down what they're saying. This is what it absolutely translates to all right this whole voting acts the voting rights bill they're trying to change in all this um is <sighs> translates to minorities are not intelligent enough to figure out the processes that make the nation go round And I would love for somebody to, if you disagree with me, please tell me what that translates for to you. Like, what does that mean to you? Because that has been the case. This is, they, they've been quite open about it. They've been saying it the entire time and nobody calls them out on this. Now you'll hear the Democrats, um, Keep bringing up how Republicans tried to change the Voting Rights Act before to take away, you know, minorities' right to vote. That, that's what they're saying. This is what they're saying. That when the last time the Supreme Court voted on the Voting Rights Act, which is not too long ago, what, like six, seven years ago, somewhere around that time? It wasn't that long ago. Um, they, you know, they spun it the entire time as, the Republicans are trying to take away the right to vote for minorities. Now, I mean, you hear that, 
And then you hear that there's a, the Voting Rights Act is being brought up before Congress, and the Democrats are telling you all this, and the, the left, the leftist media is telling you all this, and they're playing on your heartstrings and telling you that the Republicans are racist, don't believe them, and all day constantly it's, they're racist, they're racist, they're trying to take away your right to vote, they're trying to take away your right to vote, I'm snapping, I'm snapping my fingers here, they're taking away your right to vote, they're taking away your right to vote. They keep pounding it into your brain. You start to believe it. It's all you see every day, and you got to ask yourself, well, "Damn, I mean, I, 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 I would question it and say it's a lie, but I mean, it's been on every television station, every every news anchor has been saying the same thing. I mean, I don't. How could they all have gotten it wrong? And then you find out that most of the majors, or most of your local even news stations, are owned by one company. And they're all reading from a script. <sighs> what the Supreme Court was changing was apparently what was called pre-clearance. And that was basically areas, counties, states that had tried to do that very thing of predict, um, preventing people from voting. In order to change their voting rules, they had to get pre-clearance from the federal government. And then they would approve any changes you wanted to make to your your voting rights. Now, yeah, that was removed because uh, we've reached a point where that is not necessary, okay? I mean, look, if somebody's trying to pass a law or a bill that says, specifically, black people cannot vote, or Mexicans cannot vote, or any group of people singled out like that is not allowed to vote, and we're not talking about felons that are in prison or just getting out of prison, and that's them, do not add them to that conversation. But if one of those were trying to get passed, we would be aware Some that we live in a day and age where that that's not something we're worried about being a threat. Now, I understand people can say, well, well, maybe we should keep that on there just in case. Come on. Come on. The whole idea of keeping that was simply so that the federal government could still, could, could basically instill control over local elections. I believe if that wasn't, if they hadn't ruled on that before, we would be looking at larger problems now because the Democrats could claim that a state or local area would not change in their rules is akin to racism and should be pre-cleared. Now you've got the federal government literally federalized on those elections to a degree. Now, I'm saying this but let's first, you know, I, I want to just listen to, just, I'm going to play a couple clips. We're going to listen to this first clip of Chuck Schumer being asked uh, a question on this filibuster. Efforts to filibuster legislation. So what, why is it, was it okay for you to join those efforts? And secondly, are you willing to live in a minority the big difference is that we are, were always willing to negotiate in a bipartisan way. Mitch McConnell isn't. The bills he puts on the floor, even when he calls them bipartisan, aren't like the first uh, CARES bill, like the policing bill. There's no discussion. No discussion. We are sitting down. I am encouraging my colleagues to sit down with Republicans and move forward. There's a big difference in how we're conducting things and the way they're conducting. Lies, lie, lie. This this guy not realize we we have the internet. We we literally can go back over all the things that you say, and it's and we know that you're lying. You know this is this is how we know Chuck Schumer attempted to remove black people from their homes in New York because he thought they were violent and criminals and he had to protect the the Italians and the rest from the violent black people 
This is a real story. I'm not making this up. Okay? So this, you know, this is the same guy. Now we're supposed to believe him. Oh, oh, oh no, I would never do something like this. If you asked him, I guarantee you he would deny that. He's never publicly apologized for it. So I'm not, I'm going to go ahead and just make that jump and say that. The reason I'm, I want you to hear that is because we, He's, he's saying they do it better. We're, we're more open to talking. You're not asking the Democrats to sit down and talk with Republicans. You're literally telling Republicans that they have to do what the Democrats are telling them to do. Your party's in the majority and you're trying to take advantage of it. So let's listen to this real quick because this is important because like i keep saying you know i say this every time both sides are not perfect all right they both have shit that they need to account for so you know we 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 get you know you get a lot of talk about the filibuster being used whatnot during obama's administration and you hear about how the the republicans you know decided to sink everything during Obama's presidency. They were not going to say yes to anything. They voted no on everything. But, you know, the fucking... Pardon my language. The mainstream media never tells you why. They never say why. Well, why did they... Did they do it? They tell you, well, they did it because he's black. You see what I'm saying? Because Obama was black, all them white people in the Republican side just going, they're going to they show that boy something. Again, more lies. Like I said the other day, people seem to forget we have Republicans of every race. And we have many of them in government. So let's just listen to this real quick. Harry Reid used the nuclear option in 2013, clearing the way for executive branch nominees to reach approval with a simple majority. Did you hear that? Harry Reid used the freaking nuclear option so they could just use a simple majority on Obama's nominations. They didn't want to debate. No, no, they didn't want to debate. They just, we just want to do it our way. Do what we say. Do what we say. Okay, okay. They were, they were told that would come back around to. You see what I mean? And it did. Time to get the Senate working again. Mitch McConnell followed up in 2017 by extending the simple majority vote to Supreme Court nominations. When? Wait, what? Am I? Am I? Remember, you only heard about that in 2017. That's one of the reasons why the Democrats are mad that Trump got his judges on the bench. Oh, that's basically why they were mad, because the Republicans did to them what was done unto them. But, you know, the, the Democrats want to act like, oh, we, we, we would never do, we, we, no, no, no. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's a tragedy, okay? It's an absolute tragedy. And as we're talking about Schumer, you know, I'm not, it, let's just go ahead and, uh, let's just listen to this real quick. I want to, I want to play again, Senator Lankford, um, you know, from just the other day, speaking about the Democrats all of a sudden switch from supporting the filibuster as a necessary tool to now it being the symbol of racism. Well, there's two big issues here. One is this fight over voting whether states make decisions on voting or whether Washington, D.C. Democrats make states on voting for their states, even if it's a Democrat state. And then the next big issue is 
Are the Democrats in this room actually going to destroy the filibuster and silence the rights of the, the, the minority in America? Now, if you would have asked me four years ago, I would have said, no way. That's not going to happen. Because a group of Democrats and a group of Republicans joined together and said, we are committed to not destroying the legislative filibuster. Why? Because it's what makes the House and the Senate different. The House and the Senate are not just one's bigger and one's smaller. The House and the Senate operate differently. And the Senate has been the place for two and a half centuries where the debate occurs in the rights of individual senators to be able to debate the issues, defend their state, talk about the rights of Americans. This happens in the Senate. The majority rules the show in the House. If they have 218 of 435, they don't care what the other side thinks. People, when they talk about bipartisanship, never bring up the House of Representatives. They just don't. Bipartisanship doesn't happen in the House of Representatives the way it happens in the Senate, but the reason it happens in the Senate is because of this thing called the filibuster. It was interesting, when I was first elected into the Senate in 2014, the people that called me between my election and when I came were almost all Democrats, almost all of them. They want to introduce themselves. They want to say, what are you interested in? Because in the Senate, we have to work together to be able to get things done. And so I had all these Democrats that reached out to me to say, let's start trying to find areas of common ground. We're going to disagree on lots of things, but let's find the things we're going to agree on. Because we have to come to consensus because we're the United States Senate. That's commonly understood by senators, which is why in 2017, in the middle of the year, a group of Republicans and senators wrote a letter, this letter, to Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer. In that letter, I'm going to read it right here from this paragraph. It says, we are mindful of the unique role the Senate plays in the legislative process, and we are steadfastly committed to ensuring that this great American institution continues to serve as the world's greatest deliberative body. Therefore, here's their request. Therefore, we're asking you to join us in opposing any effort to curtail the existing rights and prerogatives of senators to engage in full, robust, and extended debate as we consider legislation before this body in the future. This group of senators in 2017 wrote to Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer and said, do not allow any changes. We are fully committed to making no changes in the filibuster. Don't allow it to happen for legislation. Don't allow it. Here were those that signed this document and said, this is what we believe. Kamala Harris, now Vice President of the United States. Chris Coons, who led the letter among all Democrats. Patrick Leahy, who's the person who's held this institution together. Diane Feinstein, Amy Klobuchar, Kirsten Gillibrand, Cory Booker, Michael Bennett, Joe Manchin, Angus King, Mark Warner, Bob Casey, Martin Heinrich, Jean Shaheen, Sherrod Brown, Brian Schatz, Maria Cantwell, Maisie Hirono, John Tester, Tom Carper, Maggie Hassan, Tammy Duckworth, Tim Kaine, Jack Reed, Ed Markey, Debbie Stabenow, Sheldon Whitehouse, Bob Menendez, all said, don't change the legislative filibuster. In fact, they asked me, along with everyone else, to join them in opposing any efforts to make changes to the filibuster. But now, if Lankford and others disagree with those very same people, They're considered, now they're racist, according to the Democrats. I want you to keep that in mind after listening to that. And keep in mind that Kamala Harris, the vice president 
signed off on that, along with 30 other Democrats. Keep that in mind when she gets up there and starts opening her mouth and explaining about how racist it is and all this other nonsense. You signed that letter. Because when you were in the minority, you realize the importance of what it is for the minority voice. And it should stay the same now that you are in the majority. You should be defending that right more than ever now. Because regimes change and those that are in power will not be in power. And when they are not in power, they run around scrambling, wishing somebody would listen to them, wishing they had a voice to be able to be heard. So, you know, I have to ask of them, don't be hypocrites. And Chuck Schumer, you got a lot of apologies to make. That's just a terrible man. But again, we've got elections coming up this year, so let's make some necessary changes. I feel there's a lot of Democrats in office that, well, might be time to say adios, amigo. And amigas. <laughs> but that's our show, and I thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.